month, I reviewed the novel of Demon City Shinjuku, the work from which that uh, the anime series came, and also for that matter, um, though I did not know it at the time, the first novel written by Hideyuki Kuhichi, who is best known in the West for Vampire Hunter D. Also in Japan for Vampire Hunter D, but best known for Vampire Hunter D. Put that way. And the book that I obtained it in was a omnibus edition that included the direct sequel, Demon Palace Babylon. So I decided, well, I'm already reading it. Let's just go the rest of the way and see how Demon Palace Babylon fares. Well, it is different. On the one hand, Demon Palace Babylon follows the same protagonists as Demon City Shinjuku. Now, it's focusing on, on Kiyoya, uh, Kyo, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Kiyoya, um, Izayoi, and Sayaka Rama. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing those with a supporting appearance by Dr. Mephisto. I, you know, I apologize if I'm pronouncing those incorrectly. Um, please feel free to provide appropriate pronun uh, phonetic pronunciation in the comments below. And once again, the, the story ten involves the now magically permeated semi-demonic, or just demonic, um, depending on how you view it, ward of Tokyo. Um, that is Shinjuku. And still in the place where people go when there's when you have nowhere else to go, where combat cyborgs who are wanted for murder on ten countries, um, and people who have nowhere else to live, and powerful psychic gangs all just kind of live side by side in an easy slash uneasy situation. And the so where Demon Palace Babylon comes in, it comes in a couple years later. Basically at this point, uh Ki uh Kiyoya is in his senior year in high school. Um as is um Ayaka. They're still on close terms. They're basically like they're not explicitly stated as dating, but it's implied strongly that they are dating. And Dr. Mephisto is still the um, maintaining his medical practice in Shinjuku when all of a sudden, more or less out of nowhere, not more or less, actually out of nowhere, out of thin air, uh, a large magical constructed castle or palace a demon palace, if you will, pops up in the middle of, or some vicinity of Shinjuku. And the owner of this building, who, after determining that no, actually, like that's there, this is the he illegally owns the property, is there the purchases on record, and even went through right before the original earthquake happened, but maybe some time magic going on there. Um, Decided, well, uh, since he owns the property, he's going to invite all these various VIPs to witness his the glory of his new establishment. And also among these VIPs, uh, Dr. Mephisto, Kyoya Azoi, and or Izayoi, and Sayaka Rama. Not Sayaka Rama's dad, um, the president of Earth, but uh, Sayaka. And so our protagonists go and check this out and discover that the proprietor of the of this palace, the owner, uh, has a connection to Sayaka, or rather, one of Sayaka's past lives. And it's not even necessarily that, like a soul who was a fellow traveler with Sayaka, Semiramis, because the owner of this castle is, in fact, actually Nebuchadnezzar II. And all sorts of shady stuff are going on. Attempt to bring the soul of of Semiramis, who is in fact a 
powerful and sinister sorceress who up for all sorts of nasty occult things. If you've seen Fate Apocrypha, like they're they're going with that interpretation of Semiramis as as evil sorceress sort of situation. And they got that part of um so amped up to the next degree and let that soul take control and the uh Nebuchadnezzar the second is trying to have that soul take control of Sayaka so she will be so that Semiramis will be reborn and can with the power both within Sayaka herself and interlaced and so forth throughout Shinjuku, they can dare I say it? Yes! Rule the world! <laughs> Th- that that's that, that's their plot so um this and also ultimately leads to kind of the flaw of the book not in the sense of oh well considering how much great peril that sayaka was in the last um book wouldn't it be in nebuchadnezzar uh, during nebuchadnezzar was somewhat paying attention to everything going on in Shinjuku because he took ownership of this property right before the earthquake happened. So he had to know it was coming. Um, why wouldn't Nebuchadnezzar II, you know, do something to interfere and keep um, River Ra's plan from going to fruition? Putting aside that, you know, important plot hole where if the bad guy of the last book had won, um, Nebuchadnezzar is stuck going, well, crap, now I have to wait for a soul to reincarnate again. And also the world's destroyed. Damn it. Putting that part aside, um, while there's a lot of character focus on Yoya and Sayaka, like Shinjuku as a whole suffers because of it. Um, and like the character development isn't even necessarily that great either. It's it's very shonen power creep or like shonen fight storyline kind of situation where. The bad guy is introduced. He has like three or four generals who uh, Kyuya has to fight over the course of the book while trying to come into terms with the villain's plan is. And Dr. Mephisto kind of putting his thumb on the scale in Kyuya's favor and possible wherever he can. And all this, that, and the other thing. It's, it's all right. It's fine. It's, if I have an objection to it, is it doesn't really do anything with the setting of Demon City Shinjuku in the same way that the first book did. And like, by comparison, the uh, Demon City Blues series, which is the other one, um, also known as the, the Demon Princess uh, series is what's been published in the United States. Um, get the exact title. One moment. Uh, you go. Yasha Kiden, uh, the Demon Princess. That side storyline feels like it plays a lot more with the con- with the universe of Demon City Shinjuku and this everything we've developed before for what's happening inside it. Um and presumably also that there's a apparently a standalone novel Demon Doctor Mephisto, which I don't think has been translated yet. Like all of those feel like they would do something with and most likely do do something with the whole idea of okay you have this ward of tokyo uh we have the shinjuku ward which is basically the size of a full, full borough of new york like brooklyn or the bronx or something like that um or long island or what have you like, but like this brooklyn or the bronx is probably a better example like, you, or like if the bronx itself had just become this some demon and magical entity permeated ward of of New York City and all sorts of magical entities had come to live there, but also there's all sorts of people living there just trying to live their lives as best they can with all of this going on around them. 
so much narrative potential there. And this book, Demon Palace Babylon, squanders it. It really would feel like that the Demon Princess portion, that uh, the Yasha Keaton portion of the storyline uh, or of the series, the uh, like seven or eight novels of that, which I am looking forward to reading. I picked up the first one from um, digitally already from Amazon. That feels like it's going to give me more of what I'm looking for um, from what has been set up in Demon City Shinjuku. I do wish that we had a storyline with, with the characters of the first movie. Um, not just with Dr. Mephisto, but also Kiyoya and Siaka that involved the storyline a little, that involved the, the world within Demon, with, within Shinjuku, how they've changed it and impacted it and how people react to it and to them and how they are perceived. Um, I wish we like, had a chance to do that with here as opposed to so much more narrative focus just being stuck up up on up in the demon palace basically in the clouds well above what the people on the streets are doing and even for that matter we don't see much about what the people on the streets of shinjuku perceive about hey this palace just dropped in out of freaking nowhere and how do we react to that i mean yes we're in the demon city shinjuku the place where all sorts of weird crap does like can happen and has happened. We've had two attempts to destroy the world happen here in less than, you know, like not just less than a decade, but like in only a couple of years. So that's like, it would be nice to have a perception of that, but such is as it is. I am and glad I, I read it. I'm glad I finished the book, the whole omnibus volume. And I am definitely going to move on to the Yasha Kiden novels in the future. I do hope like some of the rest of these do get picked up. Um, there's like, I'm seeing about 12 Demon City Blues novels. I don't know if they're short story collections or just individual short stories. Um, and there's like three other, like three or four other books leading into this. Um, Legend of the Devil King and... Chu Guan. Um, before we get to the Demon Princess arc, and I'd like to read those as well. Again, Demon City Shinjuku from that first book has grabbed me, like by the collar and yanked, and or like by the sides of the face and forced my attention in a way that Vampire Hunter D, while I enjoyed immensely, never quite did. And I appreciate this a lot. And I am more excited to read the books in this, to actively seek out and read the books of these series. In fact, almost more than I am. Like, if Wicked City ever were to get licensed rescued again as a novel, I'd be interested in reading it. But I wouldn't necessarily prioritize it over the Yasha Kedon novels or other, or other Demon City Blues novels. So if you are interested, if, uh, I'll have links to where you can pick this up, which is with the uh, last um, video in the show notes below. Um, and I definitely recommend again, picking this up. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 